What's up, everybody? Today, I want to talk about one of the most fundamental components of any audio workflow out there, from music through post all the way into every other component of working with sound. That is signal flow and busing. Now, some of you may be saying, what do you mean signal flow busing? I put all my audio into a session and I routed out an output and that's really it. It gives me an audio file. And yeah, you could do that if you wanted it to be really, really simplistic. But having the level of control that you need in professional workflows gives you a lot more flexibility when it comes to processing audio, when it comes to really troubleshooting or problem solving, all the way up to doing really creative stuff with sound design or music or really any aspect of sound in general. Before we get started, if you enjoy these videos, you want to support my channel, head on over to alexnickerbacher.com where I've got a bunch of different sound effects libraries that are royalty free, curated from my personal collection for your use on any project. You'll find everything from transitions and sound design to ambiences and backgrounds, even really specific foley like footsteps, cloth movements, and more. I've also got a professional post-production mixing template built out for Pro Tools, or if you want to learn how to build your own templates in any software using major studio concepts, you can check out my course on how to build a professional mixing template up on Udemy at the links in the description. You can also donate if you'd like. Anything really helps me spend more time on this channel sharing major studio ideas and concepts with everyone. All right, so busing is super, super important, but in order to understand why it's important and then use it creatively and get really, really good use out of it, for your workflows, you have to understand what it is. Bussing is simply the concept of routing audio from one place to another within a session. It's how audio gets sent all over the place in major workflows, all the way down to simple things like audiobooks. It really is kind of the fundamental groundwork for any audio session to be built on. Now, if you're coming from the video world or you're just starting out in the audio world, that can actually be kind of a challenging concept to wrap your head around as far as signal routing is concerned and why you should care about it. Because at the end of the day, you're just taking a bunch of tracks and you're narrowing them down to one final deliverable, whether it's a 7.1 print master or a stereo music file or even something mono, it doesn't really matter. Pretty much every part of the audio workflow can be broken down into simply sending one piece of audio to another destination, whether it's something simple like tossing a file into a session and just sending it out an output or bussing that file to an output, or if you've got something complex like taking a group of dialogue tracks and bussing them to a single output so that you have control over all of them at the same time. Bussing is the action of sending audio from one place to another, as well as the term used to refer to the actual thing that the audio travels down in order to get from its source to its destination. And again, bussing can be as simple as, say, routing the output of one track of audio in DaVinci Resolve bussing that to the master output so you can actually hear it out of your speakers, or in more complex workflows in Pro Tools on a major feature film, for example, having a bunch of different groups of sound effects that are all kind of similar within themselves, you can bus those individual sound groups to single tracks and have control over each of those individual groups on single channels rather than having them all split out across 10 or 20 or 30 different tracks individually. And once you understand that bussing is just simply sending audio around whatever session or whatever hardware you might be working with, you can get really creative with it. The easiest example, again, is routing a bunch of different dialogue tracks down to a single submaster. You can bus all those tracks individually down to one fader or one channel. That gives you the ability to process all of those channels as one thing rather than having to instantiate a whole bunch of different plugins across all of them at the same time. Also with music, if you've got say a whole group of drums and you wanna process not just the individual components like the kick, the snare, the overheads, etc., but you wanna process the whole drum kit as a single entity, you can bus all those individual elements down to a single channel and run any processing you might need to from there. Great example of complex applications for this, if you've got a big car chase sequence and you have three cars participating, you wanna separate out the engine sounds from the tire sounds from the actual mechanisms like the doors or the crashes or skids or what have you of all three different cars. That way you have individual control over each car and each component of each car separately from all of each other. You can bus all the engine sounds of one car down to one track and then bus all of the tire skids or maybe crashes or whatever else you might wanna add in down to another track. And that way, instead of having 15 or 20 different tracks of car skids and slams and crashes and excels and whatever else, You've just got two. Then you can do that same thing for the other two cars. And instead of having 80 tracks wide worth of material that you constantly have to be managing, you can just work with maybe six tracks total, two tracks per vehicle. From there, you can bust those same six tracks down to 
a car submaster or an effects output. And that way, all of the rest of the material in a session, especially in complex workflows like this, can be kept separately. You can route them anywhere you need to. If you want to process all the cars at once or each individual component of each car, you have the flexibility to do so non-destructively on the fly. So anything that needs to change, anything that needs to be modified, anything that needs to be pushed up is super, super easy because you've got all this thought out and bust properly. This can also be super helpful in dialogue mixing workflows. Let's say I've got a scene that needs to sound cohesive like it was a single take, but it was shot across two different days. Well, things are gonna sound slightly different just because they weren't shot at the same time. That's just kind of the nature of sound. I can route all of the audio from day one and bus that to a specific dialogue processing chain and then bus all the audio from day two to an identical but separate dialogue processing chain. And I can use those to kind of dial in and shape the differences to be a lot more similar to each other. And that way, again, I'm not messing with 10 or 15 or 20 different tracks, I'm changing two. And I have control over every single component of that non-destructively if I need to go back to anything. I also rely on some pretty complex busing for printing deliverables from simple stereo mixes all the way up to full on Atmos mixes. Having proper busing allows you to separate out dialogue from sound effects, from Foley, from backgrounds, from music, and keep all those individual elements sort of apart from each other. So if anything needs to change, if there's an issue with anything, if maybe a different territory needs a different language and all the rest of the mix needs to stay the same, but you can separate out just the dialogue and make sure that something is dubbed correctly, having this busing workflow down is hugely helpful for me. So no matter how simple or complex your workflow might need to be, understanding the fundamental concept that is busing signals around a session is really going to help you understand what exactly is going on with your audio, adapt to the flexibility and the needs of anything you might be doing, and get that much more control over your sound. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, comment below with any questions you might have about signal flow and routing, and check out that course I've got up on Udemy. It goes into a lot more depth on all this stuff in how to build a professional mixing template yourself. I'm over on Instagram at AXK, so come follow me over there. And as always, thanks for watching.